What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mud. Today we're finishing up our converted Imperial Guard Ministorum Priest with Eviscerator. So uh, we'll link to, to the first part of the video, but basically all we're doing is we're adding some decorational script. We're doing the details like this awesome hourglass here with the sands falling through it. So cool. Painting on some script in this book and yeah, just basic highlights all over this guy. So hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I've got a bunch of colors that I used. I can't remember off the top of my head because I started filming this before I went on vacation with the lady boss. Um, but basically most of the paints I'm using are from the, the, the video before, the previous video. We added in Rhinox Hide and a Doombo Brown to do the script as well as uh, yeah, the writing and the, um, the little decorational pieces in the book here and uh, some different whites for the hair and the beard. I think I brought in some Zandri dust and Screaming Skull for the hem of the robe here. But yeah, most of it is stuff that you should have. And um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. Latest play All right, let's get started. Or should we say finished painting up our Ministorum Priest. Here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint up the reds of his coat. And we're going to start with Mephiston Red. I always like to go back to the last color that I used when I'm starting from painting, uh, from, from having seen the, the washes dry. I never like to go to the, the next step up immediately. You can and your highlights are going to be even brighter as a result. So I like a little bit more of a smoother transition. Mm. I'm going to in there. Here we go. You hear my lady boss, boss blowing her nose. She's got bad allergies. After you're done painting up this highlight step, we're going to go up one step further with our reds before continuing on to the next, uh, the next color. I'm gonna make sure you get in there and paint all of these hard to reach areas. And don't worry if you if you hit something that you that you missed earlier, or you you uh, paint something accidentally like the hair there. That's that's all right. Okay, evil sun scarlet is the last highlight we're gonna do for the for the robes. So you don't want too much on your paintbrush because this is gonna be a very um, bright highlight. So we're gonna try to hit the tops of the folds the edges, all the areas that the light would catch most off of. And you want to leave that, that deeper Mephiston red color in. Uh, over the majority of the cloth. So it's got kind of like an orangey glow to it. OK, 
Okay. And we're going to take some administratum gray. We're going to paint the gray of his mustache and the gray at his temples one more time. And you just want a little bit on the edge of your brush to bring that highlight color up. And finally, we're going to use Skaven Blight Dinge to bring back up the rest of the gray hair. So try to hit the edges, the uh, t tips, all the areas where the light would be reflecting most off of. and get any of the areas that were accidentally covered with red. Right there. <clears throat> For the skin, we're going to highlight up with a mixture of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. And this is the last step that we're gonna do uh, for this section while we wait for everything to dry. So we're just hitting the tips of the knuckles on the fingers, the areas that are closest to the light, his nose, the bottom lip, the brow, the crease in his forehead down here, Okay, and uh, I messed up a little bit on his robe right there, so I'm just gonna touch it up. And I go away and let this all dry, and then we'll start doing all of the scroll work and add a little bit of detail to the hem of his robe by adding in some golden thread uh, guilty, gilding to that. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. All right, what we're gonna be doing next is painting up the highlights for the wood and the rope. So for the wood, we're going to highlight that up with some Steel Legion Drab. And what you're doing is we're not covering the, um, we're not really going over the surface, but we're almost adding Steel Legion Drab as a, as like the wooden, what's that, what's that pattern that you see on wood? Gosh, I can't even think right now. So exhausted from packing all day. The lines, you know what, you guys know what I'm talking about. You're not really going over the Morn Fang Brown so much as doing that uh, pattern. So you want to get it only on the tip of your brush and do nice, easy downward strokes. 
you want to kind of create a pattern onto the surface of the wood. And we're also getting the edges. There we go. For the ropes, we're going to use Tarak Stone. Which is... Uh, here. Tarak Stone. For the rope, you want to try to do it in individual strokes rather than dragging your brush along the entire length of the rope because you you're, you're looking for these little hashes of color. Okay, there's that. Here on the front. If your priest doesn't have any wood or rope on his being, then obviously just pass bypass that part. Now we're going for the Karak stone onto the parchment and any kind of pages, as well as the uh, tabard, any cream colored tabards. And we're continuing with the Carrack Stone here in the front. Also, this is also a good time for you to be highlighting up all of the purity seals. So all the same color. Carex stone right down the center. I really like the, the flow of the back banner. I almost think that it would be a uh, pretty cool to paint it up as if it were like a tapestry of some sort. Bless you.
Bless you. Oh. Yeah, because it's a highlight, you're... Bless you! Not gonna need to do too much. Um, and you can do this as a, as almost like a watered down... Just painting... Trying to catch the raised details on the edges. And uh, it almost reminds you of like a comic book style. Bless you! With the, with the paint strokes, where you can see the obvious paint strokes and... Uh, you're not blending so much. That kind of style would be okay, I think, because this model is not necessarily a, like a quote-unquote, bless you, clean model, like Tao or Eldar. You could do um, where you could show the individual stroke lines, and it would be, I think it would be okay. Bless you. And... Um, okay, so I'll leave it there. I'll see if I can help my lady boss keep from sneezing her lungs out. And bless you. We'll be right back. All right, so we're going to continue. And what better place to continue than with the beard? And we're going to be using Administratum Gray. So at this point in the video, I'm actually just returned from my trip with my lady boss. Everything that you saw up to this point was actually filmed before I left on my trip and I didn't get a chance to finish filming before we left, unfortunately. So here we go. We're gonna get finished right now. Um, I really like this, this kind of wild white hair in the amongst the rest of the dark hair. It's very reminiscent of some, you know, some old aging space wolves or what have you. Okay, the other color we're going to use is Skaven Blight Dinge again to paint the darker hairs. Starting here at the beard. And we're just highlighting up all these darker areas down here. And you want to make sure you get anything that you might have hit accidentally when you were painting the red of the robes. such a good time you guys it's always good to take a vacation with people you love to be around and I, I had such a great vacation it was fantastic okay what do I need to do now next we're gonna take some if I can find it storm vermin fur and this is gonna be going onto the tips of the darker hair. So he's got kind of like a gray, but also brownish look. Just kind of like at the edges and on the tips, since this is a highlight. Highlight means that you want to get the, the ridges, the raised areas and you want to create the illusion of there being more depth and layer than a lot of these sculpted figures have. You can hear my lady boss's birds. They're still up and making lots of noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> Take a little bit more Carrick Stone and paint up the page of this book. Oh my gosh, that bird is so loud. Here we go, Carrick Stone. You want to make sure that your, your paint strokes are nice and even. I knew it! 
What? I knew you'd be here. You didn't know that. Keep away. Couldn't. So we're just going to. Hey. <laughs> these ah. Stop. Ah. 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 Okay, we're back, and I found this awesome piece of artwork that had hems on the, the priest's robe. So we're going to be taking Rackarth flesh and painting a little bit of a hem at the bottom. It's too bad he doesn't have uh, sleeves all the way to the cuffs. I don't think any of the any of the um, flagellant models do, but it's too bad because there's, like I said, there's this piece of artwork in Only War that has a priest standing in front of a bunch of tanks preaching, preaching the good word of the emperor. And I saw it and I thought, oh, that's that's pretty awesome. That is how you paint a priest's robes. Kind of like this. Red with a beige hem and beige cuffs. Also, if you haven't noticed, I muddied up his base so he can join my Death Corps of Creed guys. Yeah, AK Interactive just has so much good stuff. used to be a company called MIG, and then they changed, but I mean, their products, I bought, uh, I, I went on a shopping spree, and I bought, like, engine oil, and uh, interior plating stuff, it's just so much, so much great tools for the, specifically for the vehicle, hobbyist and painter, but... Yeah, you could use a lot of their products on, on normal figures as well, or non-vehicle figures. Basically, I'm just following the, the line of the, the robe at the bottom, trying to be as clean as I can with this hem. And by that is, I, I want to make sure that there's not any errant uh, paint strokes at the top. Because the bottom is frayed, so it's okay if we don't see the bottom as long as we paint over all the red at the bottom of the hem. What's really important though, when you're doing this kind of work, is making sure that you paint smooth, even lines that follow the curve of the robe as much as possible, so it kind of creates the optical illusion of there being a very consistent hem. There you go. Alright, what we're going to do now is add a little bit of sand to uh, brother man's glass, hourglass. I'm gonna start that with Zandri dust. So I'm going to make like there's still lots of sand left. So I'm going to put paint from the center. Make sure that you get all of the uh, paint all the way up to the sides. And all the way around. So no matter which direction somebody holds your figure, 
go see the sand. Okay, so there you go. You've got sand in the hourglass at the top, slowly trickling down. You've got the sand at the bottom. And now we are going to highlight it. For that I'm going to use Screaming Skull. And I'm only going to highlight just a tiny, tiny little bit. Right in the middle. For the uh, rest of the glass, I'm going to highlight using Fenrisian Grey, and all I'm going to do with Fenrisian Grey is I'm going to put a, just a tiny little reflection line right up the middle. So no matter, like, if you turn your, your figure, when the light hits it, you'll see a very subtle line of the light reflecting it. So what we're doing is we're just enhancing that. going with the way the it would normally look. Now what I'm going to take is Abaddon Black and simply all I'm going to do is just line in between the sand and the frame. The silver frame. So specifically you're just taking it on the tip of your brush and you're creating a black line in between kind of helps the eye direct where it's supposed to look. Right. So Lewis is looking pretty sh uh, schnazzy. So now we're going to finish by giving him some scroll work. Okay. Oh my goodness. Have you guys seen the new J or January White Dwarf? The Blanchitsu article is just insane. John Blanche's article is unbelievable. It's so cool. So I'm going to try to recreate um, what the what the artist did, and we'll see how we'll see how that works. So the artist's name is Johan Egerkens, and it's located on page. Does it show what page this is? Yeah, it's well. Anyway, it's a Blanchitsu article, and each of the votive scrolls have this amazing detail on it, from the henchman all the way up to the witch hunter of this of this little band. And just amazing, amazing detail. So I really, really dig it. He even drew a picture of John Blanche on one of these scrolls. How crazy is that? So I'm going to try to do what I can to kind of achieve the same effect if possible. And we're going to start by actually highlighting up the hem of the robe with Screaming Skull. Before we even get to the, the script, I'm going to get this out of the way so I don't have to do it later. But yeah, I remember seeing that and just thinking, oh, that is, that is like the, the quintessential John Blanche style. Lots of weird looking figures, 
and um, lots of intricate details. So that's kind of what I'm going to try to try to achieve here. Oh, you guys, I had so much fun on vacation in San Francisco. I think I gained like 20 pounds. There was so much food. We ate so much. It's hard not to. I mean, there's so much good restaurants. I mean, when you live like I do on an island and you're kind of used to the same, the same kind of restaurants and the same, you know, everything is so small here. Everything just, the, the island is so small. There's only so much. Okay, I'm also taking the screaming skull and I'm gonna line the edges. So when that happens, um, you know, you get used to life at a certain speed and it's just so, it was so cool being, being up there. We local people refer to it as the mainland. The continental USA. So good. All right. So let's get started. Okay, let's get into writing of the purity scrolls. <clears throat> so I've got my 0 0.005 micron arts pen here in black. And this is what I'm going to be mainly using. Now, I was looking up some iconography of the Ministorum priests, and I've seen a lot of great uh, artwork on it, thanks to the Lexicanum and the 40k wiki. So I'm going to see if I can add those as well. But uh, mainly what I'm doing is trying to write as as much as I can keep the lines as thin as possible and as close to each other as possible. So I know that the symbol is an eye, like the Inquisition eye, with a skull in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to recreate that here on the bottom. Just a, it's a simplified version of it with some, yeah, here we go. I'm just going to write lines of script along the top. There we go for that side. <clears throat> here on the front, what I'm going to do is do a little bit of a check pattern, kind of like the artist in the January White Dwarf. So that is, starts with the line here at the top to form the border. And then what I'm going to do is just dot little squares on the inside. These don't have to be exact because what we're going to do is clean them up with some paint on our paintbrush. Just kind of plotting out where we want them to be. Then we're gonna go back to writing some lines here. And then the same thing over here on this one. So our priest here is very faithful. He's got lots of prayers and stuff written on these scrolls. All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to try to clean up our checker pattern here. The way we're going to do that is by taking our brush, smaller brushes you can find. So I'm going to be using a fine detail brush and Abaddon Black. Try and get it only on the tip of the brush, and then... Yeah, 
Yeah, what we might need to do is... I'm kind of just like dotting it. Uh, but if you also checked out my how to paint checker patterns, that's another very easy, simple way to do it as well. But basically, yeah, the checkered motif is, is very common in Games Workshop artwork. All right, so we're gonna move on now to the scroll up here. And uh, what we're gonna use for that is Let's start with corn red. Actually, instead of corn red, because the robe is so red, we're gonna use Doombo Brown and then build up to a red. So keep the corn red nearby just in case, but we're gonna start with Doombo Brown instead. If you've got the old paints, it would be um, dark flesh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint a little bit of a square here. around up the corners there as you can see and then I'm going to take some corn red and just highlight this square. And this is good because it shows that the the red ink has started to fade a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing on the left page, a little bit further down. And being careful now to try to keep it under this rope. And make it nice and even. Now if you're uneven, with this, then simply go back and get some Carex stone, which was the paint used for the pages, right? And we're going to just clean up the edges. We want it to we want to square it off, so. Just straightening the edges there. We're gonna get, give that some time to dry. And while that's drying, we're going to take some Some Rhinox Hide, and this is going to be our ink because the book is a little bit bigger. We're not going to use the Micron Arts pen, we're going to actually use this Rhinox Hide, and we're going to um, paint the lines of script. So why Rhinox Hide instead of like Abaddon Black? It's because the Rhinox Hide has a more of a faded dark brown ink look. We went with black because the black is so striking. It could look like it was very recently written 
and we want these pages to look like they've been written a very long time ago. So I'm adding lots of like diagonal slashes, but mostly I'm just kind of sticking to a line and trying to make it as smooth and even as possible as it goes across. This is why having a cork and a uh, some poster tack is really, really helpful. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm switching the angle of the book. Instead of doing it like right side up like this, I'm switching it to be more like at an angle that my hand can reach it and paint at. So this changes how my squiggly lines are going to look, but not too much. You should still be able to get a good kind of uh, angle for painting the, painting the script here. All right, so some of the lines came out a little bit thicker than I wanted, and if that happens, simple. All you have to do is go back with your Carac stone and fix it. In general, though, you want to make sure that the lines of script are very thin, because that way the eye is a little bit more confused and doesn't really tell that the, the the little squiggly lines are actual um, script or not. Right, we're giving the impression that there is actual script on these pages. So writing as thin as possible helps us to uh, keep that illusion up. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Carrick Stone and we're going to water it down on our wet palette. And then we're slowly going to just paint it over the script. And what this does, if you water it down enough, is it makes the script look like it is faded. Okay, so uh, sorry about that, the video cut out for just a second there. So I had finished the script here on the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white scar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a white letter in each of the little red boxes. And what this does is it creates a contrast of color that is going to help draw the eye to the book just enough. So down here, why don't we do a, like a gothic looking R. And up here, we'll do a gothic looking T.
your letters are too big, or small, or shaped weirdly, like mine kind of is, then all you have to do is go back and clean it up with some corn red. Not that good when you look at it close up, but from far away, far away, it uh, looks pretty decent. So moving on, we're gonna basically do the same thing. We're gonna do the same thing with the tapestry on the back and with the scroll here. So um, yeah, let me show you what that looks like. I'll start it off here again with some rhinox hide. We're just making some horizontal lines straight across. So these look like they were written like very, very hastily. Whereas the prayer votive um, kind of parchment pieces sealed to his body look a little bit more like they were created and written out thoughtfully. These look should look a little bit more hastily scrawled. Okay, and for the back banner. Again, if you screw up in the middle, just go back with your Carrack stone and simply Smooth out those lines. So in my head, fluff-wise, this priest uh, is not uh, one of those richer priests that start out in, you know, a nice monastery and um, sheltered from the horrors of war. This is a priest that's been going around the galaxy and fighting and being a part attached to crusades of Imperial Guardsmen for a very, very long time, most of his adult life. So he's been stuck in the foxholes and, you know, living with these, the men of the Imperial Guard dying around him day after day after day. So he has been just writing devotional prayers and scrolls and remembrances of of the men that he's fought and died with, the most faithful. He's, um, he's kind of like listed their names and where they fell and what they did in service to the emperor to kind of motivate, motivate their, uh, their fellow guardsmen. And I think that's great because it's, it's, uh, it creates a, a clear idea for for you, the player, if you make a, a backstory, like this isn't this isn't some deluded uh, priest or confessor that 
you know, is just all about the emperor, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But this is a this is a man of faith who knows that in order for the the emperor the emperor's word to reach all over the galaxy, men have to die like good good men, and uh, he knows that it's a necessary sacrifice. But he's he's also sad at the same time that it has to be made. So in my head, maybe this this back banner is is the cloth of uh, some some forsaken Xenos world that they were on that he uh, had all the men that were about to fight in the final defense of it have to uh, write something devotional to the Emperor on it or some affirmation of their faith that they won't run in the battle something cool like that right I mean just a little piece of fluff like that really gives life to your model now every time you put it on onto the the table uh, you'll have a little bit of of a driving narrative piece to think about maybe these skulls that are hanging from uh, from the from his from his back maybe they're the uh, men that had the hugest impact on the battle, the guardsmen who gave themselves up in a huge, sacrificial, awesome, you know, selfless act to save uh, save the other men in the squad or to keep the, the temple of the emperor from falling. Something that the, the priest here can be like, look at these guys, do I have to remind you what they did? They held the line. And all of a sudden, it's not just a figure with a awesome looking back banner anymore, but it's, you know, father fill in the blank. And this back banner is the tapestry of the church of the emperor on, uh, you know, Glock's War 7, where he was one of the only survivors and he made them all write something proclaiming their faith and devotion to the emperor on it. Then it's like, whoa, cool. All right, and there you go. So, anything else we need to do? I, I Man, I love the this little hourglass thing. The more I look at it, just so awesome. Looks like it's all painted up, ready for the battlefield. Uh, we're gonna do just a, one more, one more tiny, tiny little thing here. We're going to take Siltet Green. It's my favorite part about painting a human model. It's making him look so tired. I'll water it down just a tiny bit. And then we're going to paint two little swaths right under, right under his eyeballs. Just give him some very light bags under his eyes. It should almost be like a glaze. You shouldn't see, you shouldn't really see it. There we go. So there you have it. Thanks for watching everyone. And uh, we'll hope to see you in the next video.